Hello everyone, and welcome to Living Life. It's always so good to look into the book of Proverbs because there's always something for us to learn and add to our understanding. That even if it's something that we might have learned already, when we see it again from Proverbs, we're able to be reminded this is something that we are to be careful and wise about. In today's passage, there are a lot of lessons that we can add onto our lives, but if we look at them in one picture, we see that the focus comes down to self-management or discipline, that we are to be wise in how we speak and act in our lives. So as we look into today's passage, let us open our ears and our hearts so that we may receive his wisdom and live by it. Proverbs chapter 6 verses 1 through 19. My son, if you have put up security for your neighbor, if you have shaken hands in pledge for a stranger, you have been trapped by what you said, ensnared by the words of your mouth. So do this, my son, to free yourself, since you have fallen into your neighbor's hands. Go to the point of exhaustion and give your neighbor no rest. Allow no sleep to your eyes, no slumber to your eyelids. Free yourself like a gazelle from the hand of the hunter, like a bird from the snare of the fowler. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler, yet it stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food at harvest. How long will you lie there, you sluggard? When will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a thief and scarcity like an armed man, a troublemaker and a villain who goes about with a corrupt mouth, who winks maliciously with his eye, signals with his feet, and motions with his fingers, who plots evil with deceit in his heart, he always stirs up conflict. Therefore disaster will overtake him in an instant, he will suddenly be destroyed without remedy. There are six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush into evil, a false witness who pours out lies, and a person who stirs up conflict in the community. Throughout the book of Proverbs, there are many mentions of how we need to be careful and wise in what we say. That to be wise is to be able to control your tongue. For we all know what an untamed tongue is capable of. I'm sure all of us have experienced how destructive our tongues can be when in times of rage, when anger overwhelms us, we might have spoken words that we come to regret and be ashamed of. That in thinking of those moments, we wish we could turn back time and stop ourselves from saying such foolish things. Because after those words have been spoken, the consequences are already in effect, and we have to face what comes afterwards. In today's passage as well, we see how an untamed tongue can bring about consequences for us when we make pledges or promises without proper understanding. That because of what we might have said, as it says in verse 2, you have been trapped by what you said, ensnared by the words of your mouth. That it's not because of anyone else that we are, in tra we are trapped or ensnared, but it's our own words that chain us down. We need to be disciplined in what we say so that we do not say anything that will hold us down. It's so important for us to notice and have this freedom because we are not to be people living in chains. We know what life is like when we are chained down because we have experienced what life is like with sin in our lives. That before we were able to be free in the gospel message, we were living lives chained in our sins. That the weight of our sins prevented us from fully praising our God. That the weight of our sins prevented us from fully participating in worship to our God because our sins would not allow us to be free. Our sins would constantly remind us that we are not good enough to come before our God chaining us down. But it's when we are able to know the truth of the gospel message that we are able to break free from the chains, chains and live as free people in Him. And how good it is for us to be free in the gospel message. 
because as we have this freedom, there is no longer anything that can chain us down and hold us back. It's also when we are disciplined in the words that we say that we have freedom from foolish pledges or promises that may be harmful for us. That these chains do not prevent us from doing what we can do, but in having our freedom, we may direct our skills and resources for the kingdom of God. That in our freedom, we can maintain our time with God. That in our freedom, we can help our brothers and sisters and that we can continue to build the church, the people of God, and that together we may be free in Jesus Christ. So I pray that we may be careful with the words that we speak, and especially of the promises that we make, that we are not rash in making any promises, but that we may have enough time to really think about it, to really reflect upon it, and then to be confident in our choices. So I pray that we may all be disciplined in the words that we speak. The hardest time to be disciplined is when you're overrun with emotions. That when you are full of anger, you may say something harmful or piercing to the people around you. That when you're full of excitement, you may say something in the spur of the moment. But as we continue to be aware of the weight of our words and also our promises, let us be wise in our choice of words. That we do not end up being ensnared by what we have said, but that we may speak wisely to be free and maintain this freedom. Let us pray together. Father God, as we continue to live in this daily life, Lord, help us to be wise in what we say, and not only what we say, but in how we act as well. Help us to not say foolish things. Help us to not make promises which we cannot keep. But Lord, give us the choice of words, the select words, that we may be careful in what we say, so that we may be able to follow through with what we have spoken. Lord, we know the weight of our words and what our words can do to other people. So we pray that you guide our lips, that you guide our tongues, so that we do not speak words that will harm others. But Lord, help us to also speak words that will encourage and uplift others as well. Lord, we just thank you so much again for being who you are. May we praise you and all these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.